Hi everyone, I'm Gio. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel, Gio Zavaya How To. Please hit subscribe and stay tuned for new videos. Today we're going to deploy a duplex Avaya communication manager onto a VMware platform. This video is part one of two videos. In part one, we're going to review the software we're going to need, the tools, and our network requirements. Then we're going to deploy our OVA and configure our communication manager. Let's go ahead and get started. The software required for this implementation is going to be Communication Manager 7.1 Duplex V Appliance and the tools we're going to need are access to VMware, PuTTY or mRemote NG for SSH connectivity, a web browser and your system ID and module ID. In my first video preparing for Avaya Aura 7.13, we went over the VMware VLAN requirements and when you deploy a duplex CM you will need a VLAN for your management IP and this is where your primary and standby server IPs will go along with your processor Ethernet virtual IP. Then you will need a non-routable VLAN for your CM duplication link. The duplication link is what CM uses to monitor its heartbeat and to keep the databases synced between the primary and standby server. Please note that your management subnet and your duplication link subnet cannot be the same. Once you've worked with your VMware team to configure the required VLANs, you will have the required subnets to gather your IP information. For your CM, you're going to need five IP addresses. One IP for your primary server, the second IP for your standby CM, a third IP for your virtual processor Ethernet, a fourth IP for your primary duplication link, and a fifth IP for your standby duplication link. You are also going to need your domain, NTP server, DNS server, your WebLM server IP. For your WebLM, you should be using your system manager. There's no real good reason to use a standalone WebLM server, especially if you have a redundant system manager. Also, make sure to document all of your IP information. Now we're ready to deploy our OVA. Log into your VMware server. Once logged in, click on Virtual Machines, then click on Create Register VM. Under Select Creation Type, click on Deploy a Virtual Machine from an OVF or OVA file, then click Next. On the next screen, type the name of your CM. Then click on the blue area to select your OVA file. Navigate to where your OVA file is stored and choose your file and then click on open and then click next. Under select storage, choose your data store. In a large environment, you will probably have multiple data stores, but in my lab, I only have one. So I'm going to choose my data store and click next. I'm going to click on agree to accept the license agreement and then I'm going to click Next. Under Deployment Options, I'm going to choose my network mappings. In your enterprise environment, you should see more options and this is where you will assign your duplication link, subnet, along with your management subnet. In my lab server, I have chosen my network mappings. Under Deployment Type, I'm going to choose CM Duplex Mac Users of 30,000. My other option is CM High Duplex, which gives me 36,000 users, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it at 30,000 users. Under Disk Provisioning, I'm going to choose Thick, and under Power On Automatically, I'm going to make sure that that's checkmarked. Then I'm going to click on Next. On my lab server, I don't have the additional settings page where it allows me to input the network configuration information and username and password. If you are deploying the OVA in your enterprise environment, expect to see the additional settings page. At this point, we are ready to deploy the OVA. Then I will finish configuring our CM via CLI. I'm going to click on Finish. The OVA has deployed successfully and I have access to CM via the VMware console. At the server login, I'm going to type craft for username. The password is craft01. Under terminal type, I'm just going to type enter. For suppress alarm origination, I'm going to type Y for yes. Now I'm going to enter my IP address, my subnet mask. Next, I'm going to enter my default gateway. Now it's asking me to verify my network configuration. I'm going to type Y for yes. Now it's asking me to create an administrative account. I'm going to create the admin account. I'm going to put my password. And now I'm going to enable EASG by typing Y for yes. And now I'm done configuring my communication manager via CLI. Next, I'm going to access my communication manager system management interface via a web browser by typing the IP address of my CM on the address bar. I am now logged into my communication manager with the admin account I created. I'm going to navigate to administration, then I'm going to click on server maintenance, then I'm going to navigate to server configuration, and I'm going to click on server role. Under server role, I'm going to configure our SID and MID. The SID is a 10 digit number that is created when Avaya generates the license. If you don't have your SID number, check with your Avaya account manager or your business partner. Under SID, I'm going to type a dummy number for the purpose of this demonstration. 
since the core is the main server, the module ID is always going to be one for the main server. If you have an ESS server in your environment, the MID for that server would be two. The MIDs for communication managers are generated when you create your SEID via the global registration tool. So if you have multiple number of LSPs during the creation of the SEID, you will assign a MID number to your LSPs. Also make sure to input the same information when you configure your standby server. My settings are done and I'm going to click on change. And in order for the changes to take effect, we need to restart our server. So I'm going to click on restart now. Our CM was successfully restarted. Next, I'm going to click on network configuration and we're going to configure our network settings. Under hostname, put the name of your communication manager hostname. Under LES hostname, put the name of your processor ethernet hostname. Then put your primary DNS, secondary NES, and tertiary DNS if you have one. Under server ID, leave your main CM as one. But when you configure your standby server, make sure to change the server ID to two for the standby server. Next, put your default gateway. Under ETH0, I have the IP address of my communication manager along with the subnet mask. Under your LES IP address, I have the processor ethernet IP address. Under functional assignment, I have corporate LAN processor ethernet control network. Under ETH1, I have the IP address of my duplication link along with the subnet mask. And under functional assignment, I have chosen duplication link. Now that I'm done configuring my network settings, I'm going to click on change. And then I'm going to restart my CM. My communication manager was successfully restarted. Next, I'm going to click on duplication parameters. Under select server duplication, you can choose to encrypt the duplication data if you like. For our demonstration, I'm going to choose the first option, which does not encrypt the data. Under duplication parameters, I have put the host name of my standby server and the server ID number two, which is the server ID I assigned to my standby server. Under corporate LAN PE IP, I have put the IP address of my standby CM server. Under duplication IP, I have put the duplication IP of my standby server and under IP address for PE health check I have put the IP address of my standby server. Now that I'm done I'm going to click on change then I'm going to restart my CM. My CM has successfully restarted next I'm going to click on time zone configuration and I'm going to configure my time zone then I'll hit apply. Next I'm going to click on NTP configuration and I'm going to enable NTP. I have typed my NTP information and I'm going to click on apply. My NTP was successfully configured and now I'm under the status summary page. And as you can see, my CM is currently busy out. I pre-deployed my standby server, but it's currently busy out as well. I'm going to click on busy out release server and I'm going to release my primary communication manager. It has successfully released my communication manager. So I'm going to click on my status summary page again. And I can see that now it is active. Next, I'm going to release my standby communication manager. And as you can see, my standby communication manager has been released and is currently in the standby mode. Now I'm back on my primary communication manager and I'm on the status summary page. And as you can see, my duplication link is up. My standby shadowing is on. To deploy your standby communication manager, just follow the same step I just showed you and this completes our tutorial. Today, we deploy a duplex communication manager onto a VMware platform. Then we configure our communication manager and got it connected to our standby server. Please stay tuned for part two of deploying a duplex Avaya communication manager. In part two, we're going to upgrade our communication manager to feature pack four. Then we are going to restore its configuration from backup. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please hit subscribe.